In this video, we're going to focus on how we can trigger a hover of value showing in here, for example. As you can see here, once we hover on here, we will show the value as well of these points. So let's start to look how we can do this. So let's start to look how to display the text or values on Hoover in Chart.js. So the first thing what we need is we need to go to Chart.js3.com, getting started this specific link here, and we're going to get the boiler template. So we're going to, once you're on here, and this link you can find as well in the description box, scroll down and copy this chunk of code here. Copy this. And if you want to understand this code, please watch this video here. So then we'll paste that in there. Now we'll cut this out and I'll put the title in here. Save this, refresh, there we are. Let's maximize the size of this by saying here 80% for the chart, refresh, there we are. Let's convert this into a line chart because then it will be more practical. So let's say a line, line, save, refresh, there we are. So what I want to do is I want to hover over this and I want to remove the tooltip and just show the value of number 12 the moment we hover on these hit radius points. So what we're going to do here is, first of all, uh, after the scale, say comma, we say plugins, and then we're going to say here tooltip, I'm going to say here enabled, enabled false to hide that tooltip. Save, refresh, if I hover now, there we are. You can see here, it opens up or it does something, but it doesn't show anything at all. Next what I want to do is I want to make sure that the uh, hover radius, starts to become larger than it is right now because else it will not fit the 12 or the value whatever it is in that point so what i'm going to do here in the options we can say here enter and then in here we're going to say hover radius equals 30 and if we do it this we could also do it in the data set but if we do it in here it will trigger on it on every single data set that we have although we only have one data set so it doesn't matter much Make sure you have a comma here. If I save this, refresh, you should see now here a bigger radius point. So now we have this. What we now have to do, of course, is to create our plugin. So we're going to do in the options, you see these option brackets, we put a comma here. Let's say plugins bracket. And then we can say here Hoover value. Let's grab this. And this will be our new plugin. We can say here slash slash Hoover value plugin block constant Hoover value equals then we're going to get the ID, although we won't be using this, but just put it in there. And then we're going to say here, when would we like to draw these numbers in our item here? Well, basically you want to draw them the moment we hover on top of it. And uh, then we put it in here after we have drawn the data set. So the text should be on top of everything else. So we're going to say here after data sets draw so after the data set has been drawn at that very moment we want to trigger this and then i'm going to say here chart arcs and plugin options so once we have this what we want to do now is of course to start breaking this down of course we have this chart here this will be our object and that will be very important so what i'm going to do here now an object destruction i'm going to say a constant and this constant equals chart of course the chart object and then in here by the way if you don't understand what i'm doing here is object destructuring there's a link in the description box which is understanding chart yes object destruction which is what i'm doing here very important so i'm not explaining this part so then i'm going to say a ctx the data and the options all right so now we have this so what i want to do now is to start to look at one thing first of all i must understand when do we know which item that we as you hover on top of it is active and by active, I mean, are we hovering on top of it? Yes or no. So for that, there's a built-in chart. Yes, command. It's called chart, which is basically the chart object as well. And then this built-in command, get active elements. And then if we do this, what we can do here, this is including this. And then we're going to say a console log. And let's start to show this. If I save this, ignore that, refresh open up the console log you can see here there is none all right but the moment i hover you can see it is becoming active and it starts to show the element it shows basically how many uh items being displayed because there's only one item we're going to we only see one zero here and then we say a data index which indicates the data set and here 
the index should indicate the data or the array value. So as you can see here, it shows a lot and this index five is of course index number five in this array because it starts with zero, so zero, one, two, three, four, five, that's Saturday, that's correct because I was hovering on top of the yellow one. Next, you can see here the element and this element is very important. Interesting here, it says active false. Maybe it's now, I'm not sure exactly why it shows here. It's supposed to be active because it shows this. Anyway, that does not matter much because what we do know here, and that's very important, is the X and Y coordinates. Because there, we know exactly the position where do we have to put the new text. All right, so we have a lot of information here. I'm going to just put it here like that. So we have this, so we can access this information. And let's start to work now with this. So we're going to say here, we have this console log that will show everything. But uh, what I want to do is I want to get the specific one that we find here that is considered as active. All right, so how do you do that? So we want to say here, dot for each. So you want to loop through every item that we have, but basically we only have one item, so it doesn't matter much. We want to do for each and then make sure we have this double parentheses here. And this one here is of course with the console log, so I can just probably remove this so we don't have access. And then what we want to say here for each, for every item that is active. So we're going to refer this as active. Uh, let's see, is this correct? Well, hold on, we have to make sure it's like this. And then of course a function error expression because it's basically a callback functionality here. So then once this is true and it's active, in that case, I want to go with through every single item. And this active is just a reference basically to zero or whatever we find here. So then what I want to do is if it is active, what do we can what can we do? Let's do a console log. And I'm going to say the active, which is the shorthand, of course. Active, and then we can say active. Let's grab the data set. Dot data set for now. If I save this, we should see here always data set zero. Zero, zero, zero. And the reason why we do this is, or we the reason why it's zero is because this is the data set. So if I do only the index, if I'm not mistaken, it's with that without the capitalized I, that's correct. So it's a small I. You can see it shows now the value. Let's zoom this in a bit. You can see here four, four, three, that's correct. This should be zero. There we are. So it understands what we're doing now. So now we have this proper way of communicating with chart.js. Now let's start to put it all in action. So what I'm going to do here, let's do a constant and we're going to say this is the value itself. And the value is of course the index number well, it's basically two things. We have the data here, which is the data object, and this is a reference directly from data, data to data sets, and then into the data. So we can get whatever data we want here with the index. So I'm going to say here, data dot data sets. Then here the index number, this is zero, but of course we're not allowed to use it like that. We're going to use active. And we're going to say here, data set uh, data set index, that's correct. And then we're going to say a dot data, and then we're going to say your index. By doing that, and if we do now a console log and just say here the value, we should see now the value that we want. Save, refresh, but it will be only in the console log. Oh, all right, interesting. Index is not defined, of course. Why is this wrong? My bad, I forgot to put the reference because it's from active dot index. So if I save this, refresh, now we should see the value. Value number nine, which is correct. Then if I go here, 18, there you are, 12, etc., etc. All right, so this works all, and this looks all very well and fine. Now let's start to continue on and, oh, well, we can do a lot of things and then we can start to draw the text. So what I want to do here is a few items. We have this one, let's do a constant. And this constant will get the value of the text. So how big should be the size? We can just get, for example, this one here of 30 pixels. And of course, this could be different. If the radius would be different, size 20, then we can just do a reference to this Hoover radius here. So what I'm going to say here is font size. Let's do it like that. And then I'm going to say here, this is from the options, which is this uh, object here, dot options dot Hoover radius. Very straightforward. So once we have this, then I want, I want to save just all variables above. And once we do this, we can now start to say here the font type and size. So we're going to say ctx dot. And we're going to say here font equals. And then we're going to use your backtick, backtick. 
and back tick is on it's uh, on your keyboard below the escape button and then we can just do a uh, simple this is a simple way of concatenation go into your dollar sign and then uh we can make it bold let's say bold space then the font size let's grab let's put that in here this variable and then finally the uh font family which is sans serif by default for chart js so once we have this we're not done yet then what we want to do is well let's say uh, let's put in the text first before we do anything else of design etc etc so let's focus on the writing the text so we want to say fill text and this fill text here what i want to do is first of all what do i want to show basically it's the first one is the value then the x coordinate and then the y coordinates so you probably already figured out what i told you just previously here or, or later on we will see that as well if you we get this here uh, then we can get the x and y coordinates anyway later on this value equals here the value so then is the question how do we get this one here well to do this let's one more time look at how we get the console log or go into the console log just grab this here and just save that refresh click on one of these and then we open up this you can see here we go to element and then x and y and i realize of course we can even do it easier because we have the active as a shorthand you put the active in here it's exactly the same there we are now you can see here we already get a lot of information the active we go to get the element then x and y very straightforward now so we're going to say here active dot oh uh, element dot or active dot element dot x and active.element.y so now we have this save that refresh all right you can see here now look at that the numbers are showing but do you like the design me personally not so let's fix that design immediately so what i'm going to do here is uh oh sorry didn't want to do that but what i want to do here is first of all let's give a proper font size so i'm going to say ctx.fill style and to make it nicer what i want to do is i want to get the color to get the color we almost have the same structure as this except for one tiny difference this was data and if you look here here was the data and now i want to get the color and more specifically i want to get this border color that we have here that dark yellow or dark blue etc etc so we just grab this border color here copy that go down here and replace the data with that so if i save that refresh you can see here there we are and you can see this starts to look nicely but of course maybe we should make this bolder or i have a feeling like it should be maybe bolder font style bolder although it's hard to notice maybe we need to also increase the size of course we need to and of course you can see here we're not in the center so let's start to put this more in the center or at least a bit more here so what we're going to do here is well let's say my column we're going to say ctx dot then say text align and this one is a string value because by default it's left we want to put it on center save this refresh then we have this all right text align and then what i want to do is the font size i want to change the font size as well so we remember we have the font size here so we could say here uh, oh this is the font size apparently and the hoover option hoover radius uh for some reason this is not even grabbing the value so let's start to look what's going on here so this is a good one so let's do a console log and just check what is the font size did i misspell that or did i do something incorrect here let's save that refresh all right number 30 so that's very interesting because number 30 and then we see here the font size all right so let me explain and this is a real real issue here is that we need to make sure that this here is probably on top to force this dot font all right and then we have to force this to load that one first before anything else refresh let's double check all right not as well so let me check hold on all right so after checking it is a real real bad amateur mistake from my side of course when you have this so you could do it down but of course i do recommend to put it up first putting giving this priority that's the most important one but i forgot to put in here to specify pixels so that's what we have to do so then we'll understand what we're doing here there we are that's why i want to make it bolder but it was not even showing up the boldness so I save the refresh that i think now we have a quite decent item here showing 
All right, so that's absolutely phenomenal as you can see here. Of course, you could change the color in anything you want, but this is basically the way to do it. You can see here now it shows this nicely. Of course, final item, what I want to do here is ctx.restore to undo everything we had above. So this is very important. So when you have this, you want to make sure you undo everything as well afterwards here to so restore it back into its original save value here the ctx save is basically the starting point and then we restore that so it will not impact any other designs or bleed over to anything else so let's save this refresh there we are and this is basically the way how you can control and create and draw uh, text based on interaction here on chart.js so if you enjoyed this video and maybe you want instead of having text in here you want to edit for example in a pie chart or donut ring chart here you can put it in the center here in that case i'm going to recommend you this video here on how to add multiple text labels stacked in a donut chart in chart.js